function u sub c of t times f of t minus c, and we want to take the Laplace transform of it because we like math. So we can write this as the in improper integral from 0 to infinity in e to the negative st of u sub c of t of f of t minus c dt. And so given the unit step function, we know that this will all be equal to 0 until we get to whatever the value c is. So let's just save ourselves some time and take the integral from c to infinity. And so to do that, let's make some, a substitution really quickly. So let's set x equal to t minus c. And then solving for t, we get that t equals x plus c. And now, so this means that dx over dt equals 1, because if you, if you differentiate, it, c is a constant, so it goes away, so you just get 1, which means that dx equals dt. And this is really nice. That'll, that's really handy, so just good to know. Um, so now let's take the integral from t equals c to t equals 1 infinity of e to the negative st of u sub c of t times f of t minus c dt. But we know that once we reach the value c, the unit step function just becomes 1. So we can, that's basically just a constant now. So we can rewrite this integral without that u sub c of t function, do it to the right, without that u sub c of t function as the integral from c to infinity of e to the negative st f of t of minus c dt. So now, let's, this is still the integral in terms of t. Now let's get it in terms of x, and we're going to make our substitution. So when t equals c, x equals 0. So we now have the integral one more time from 0 to infinity of e to the minus and then s, but now we're not using t, we're substituting for t, and as we already solved for, t is equal to x plus c. So we have s times x plus c of f of, well, so x plus c, then minus c is just x. So we're left with f of x dx. All right, and so now we can separate out this two, uh, the e exponents to get it into two separate e, e, um, e terms, yes, to get it into two separate e terms. So now we can say this is equivalent to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative sx times e to the negative sc times f of x dx. e to the negative sc is just a constant because it's not dependent on x, so we can pull that out front of the integral. <coughs> So this becomes e to the negative sc times the integral of 0 to infinity of e to the negative sx times f of x dx. And so now we've figured out that the Laplace transform of u sub c of t times f of t minus c is equal to e to the negative sc times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative sx times f of x dx. And the integral part of that is just equivalent to the Laplace transform of f of x. It's, it's essentially the same thing as e to the negative st times f of t. So now it's just the Laplace transform of some function in the x domain rather than the t domain. Um. So, or it would be equivalent to if we took the Laplace transform of f of y. It would be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative sy times f of y dy. It's just, it all equals some function of s is what, what it comes down to. Um, the variable t, x, y, they all disappear when you take the Laplace transform. They all be, are transformed into this s domain. So this is our conclusion. We have the Laplace transform of u sub c of t 
times f of t minus c is equal to e to the negative sc times the Laplace of f of t, which is just the unshifted function. And that makes it really simple. So as long as you know what the unshifted function is, you can figure out what the Laplace transform of the shifted function is. Um, so let's do an example really quick. We have the Laplace transform of u of pi, u sub pi of t times the sine of t minus pi. So using this, our c is pi now. So we have e to the minus s pi times the Laplace transform of the unshifted function, which is just sine of t. e to the minus s pi of the Laplace transform of the unshifted function sine of t. And then we know from previous videos that the Laplace transform of sine of t is equivalent to 1 over s squared plus 1. And so that just becomes e to the minus s pi, or pi s, depending on how you prefer to write it, over s squared plus 1. And that is the Laplace transform of the shifted sine function. Pretty handy.